Hi, George here. Today I wanted to talk about the Refine Edge tool. It's a tool that allows you to clean up an edge after making a selection. If you want the downloads for this project, which includes the images and the Photoshop Elements file, and also my notes and step-by-step -step guide, you'll find all of that in my photo coach for Photoshop Elements, and I'll tell you more about that at the end of the video. You can make your basic selection any way you want to. Use one of the lasso tools over here, any one of your selection tools, or even make it real easy to go up here to select and do subject. And there's our basic selection. If you want to refine the edge on this to clean it up, that's where this tool comes in. It's right down here, it says refine edge, or up here under select and refine edge right there. Let's bring this up. There we go, here's the refine edge dialog box. Now if I zoom in on the image here, I'll just grab the zoom tool right there and zoom in on the image, you can see a few problems in here, especially around the hair. This is where refine edge is most useful for areas like here. It's good elsewhere as well. Right now I'm using this in the overlay mode. We also have in here marching ants on black, on white, black and white, which is just your matte, on layers, which is how it will look when we remove the background, and the original reveal layer right there. So I found overlay is normally the easiest. You see some problems in here where we have the sky is still showing through. These are areas that the subject select wasn't able to figure out. If you click on show radius, you can see where the radius is when you're using the tool. We'll be looking at that in just a second. And then show original shows you the original selection. And we see that right now. That's our original selection. Coming down, we also have edge detection is the smart radius and the radius here. This tries to give you a cleaner edge by making your edge selection larger or smaller as it needs to when you're working with the radius tool, which is right here. And I found that sometimes just a little bit of radius can help. Now, it's kind of hard to see this, but if I pull it way over like this, you see how this edge moved in along that hair? If I pull it over here, it goes back out again. So that's what it does. It tries to find the edge and gives you a little bit of an adjustment on that. So sometimes a little bit of this helps, especially up in hair areas like this but not too much. Too much this is just going to cause you all kinds of problems. Down here, smoothing will help to smooth out rough edges. So if I had any rough edges in here, smoothing could make those a bit smoother. Feathering softens down the edge so you have a slower change from outside the selection to inside the selection. Contrast increases the contrast edge, kind of the opposite of feathering. So you wouldn't want to use these both together. And shift edge actually shifts the edge of your selection. You pull this to the left-hand side here. And notice how the edge has been moved in just a little bit also along the arm here. So this can help you if your selection is not really quite where you need, it needs just a little tweaking. You can do that with the shift edge. I rarely ever use shift edge. Okay, see how this tool works. We'll look at the bottom stuff later. Go over here where it says refine radius tool. Click on that. And that brings up a radius brush. You can see it right over here. The default size is 35 and that's okay for this picture. And you see that plus sign? What you want to do here is put that plus sign over the part that you want to have masked out and then move the circle into the part that you want to have added into your mask. So I'll just brush right along like this. And it does a real nice job of finding where the edges are in there. If there's anything inside, you can try to push in like that a little bit. That sometimes works, starting out and then pushing in. There we go. Just move around like that. And that's a pretty good job. We'll take a closer look at that in just a second. If you hold the space bar down, you can get a hand tool that allows you to move the image around. We have some problems over here. Now, the brush is too large for this. I'm going to bring my brush size down to about 15, and that's right down here in the options panel. And then I'll just brush in like this, and then this should come in and find where those edges are. And it did. Now, here's kind of a redness around that. If we zoom in a bit on this, that redness in there, this is where part of the finger is being cut off and it's outside of the mask that we want. So let's adjust that. I'll just brush right over this edge and that should do a better job on that. And that's a bit better. It's not perfect. And that's one thing to learn about using this tool is that it's not always perfect. It's usually very good, but, but perfect is really not what it does. I'll hold the alt key down this just to zoom out a little bit here. It's very good for things like hair or very good for just cleaning up edges of masks on things that are not that critical. If I was doing this image and I wanted it perfect, what I would do would be to use the polygonal lasso tool and then do a real careful hand-drawn selection right around that edge and get it exactly right. It takes a long time, but that's the best way to do it. But for hair, things like this, there's no way that you can come in here and select all that stuff. So that's where this refine edge tool comes in handy. Let's now bring our radius up a bit. I'll bring it up to about 10 pixels in here. It's looking pretty good. Now, if we change our view over here to on black, you see the actual edges in here that are being selected. Or change it to on white, and you can see what's going to be shown. Seeing a little bit of this thin stuff in here, 
That's because we have that radius here at 10 pixels. If I do show radius, you can see there is where the radius tool is working. And, and notice how it's thinner down here and it's thicker up in here. That's what's happening because of that smart radius. Now you can paint it at this point and try to come in here and catch those little bits that we're missing and try to get as much of this hair in as possible. Now the real thin stuff is probably going to be getting lost. There's almost no way to do that. You know, grab our hand tool right here and just move this down a little bit. And back to our radius tool. A little bit right there. I think that's pretty good. Bit right up in here. So I'm just carefully selecting a bit of these areas, try to get everything into the selection area. And that's pretty nice. Let's take a look at this without the show radius. Let's check the original. Here's the original selection. It was in real tight. And here is the new selection. This is with the smart radius. And we're catching all that hair because of the smart radius. Now there is some problems with this. If I hide that, it looks really nice in here, but there'll be some stuff in here we don't want. We can see that by going over here to on black. And it's all that stuff in there. It's kind of light blue around all the hair. That's because the background was a light blue. And some of this stuff is just too thin to be caught by the refined edge. It's trying to catch everything. And it's including some of that sky because it can't help it. Now we can try to lose some of that stuff by coming down here. Let's just hide that. And do decontaminate colors. And let's just try to move this up. And you see what's happening in there? We're beginning to lose some of that blue in there. It's a little bit thinner and that may or may not be helping. Let's take a look over here on white. That's looking pretty good. I think that helps a lot by getting rid of the blues in there by decontaminating our colors and moving up quite high on that. Your success in here is going to depend upon your picture and you have to just tweak it a bit like this. Just kind of play around with this to make that better. Now things like here, you don't want to be using smooth or feathering in here. These are both soften the edge out and make it a lot worse. But you can increase the contrast a little bit. And that will make your edge harder. And sometimes that can help to fill in on the little thin hairs. So I think that's looking pretty good in here. When we're all set, let's just come down here where it says output two and set this to new layer with layer mask and choose okay. We'll fix anything else that needs fixing on the layer mask. Choose okay. There we go. There's our layer mask. Now this happens to up here where you're not seeing your preview. This is a fault that's been happening for a while in Photoshop Elements. It seems to be more prevalent here in 2024. So what I'm going to be doing is saving this file, closing it down, opening it back up again. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's do file and let's do a save as and let's save this out. It should be a Photoshop file because we have layers up here. I'm going to change the name to refine edge and I'm saving it into my projects folder. Choose save. There we go. And I'll just zoom back out of that. Let's now close this down and then reopen it. I'll just close that and we'll leave that in the background for a minute file that's open and here's the file and notice now that we're seeing that layer up here in the layer mask. So that's all you need to do if you lose your thumbnails, just save it, close it, reopen it and your thumbnails are back. Let's now see how this worked out and that's what I had this picture for here. I'm just going to drag it in like that. It's a little bit short up here. I can fix that very easily. Control T for my control handles. Let me just make this a little taller. There we go. And there's that selection. The hair looks really nice in here as you can see. It's good at this size. If we zoom in on that, it's going to be a little bit rough on those edges, but it's not too bad. As I mentioned, we lost the real thin hairs in here and that's going to happen. You can't really keep those real thin things. Now, anything else that may need to be fixed in here can be fixed on the layer mask. Let's check out our edge up here. That's looking pretty good. Down here is a little bit of a haloing, a little bit of a dark shadow happening right in here by the hand. That's got thing that's fixable on the layer mask. Black hides white shows. So I'm going to go over here to my paint. It's on black. Got a paintbrush. I'm going to set this at a hard edge and let's bring the size down quite a bit. Come back to my brush settings and here I can bring my hardness about halfway. Something that you can't do over here, but you can do it right here. Just bringing down the hardness just a little bit. And then I can brush in here with that black and run on the layer mask and very carefully paint that out. And the reason why I'm doing it on the layer mask is if I mess up, like if I do that by accident, I can change my colors to white and then come back in and paint white on the layer mask and bring it back in again. So you have total control that way by using that. Now some areas like this, this little pixelization in here, that's just because I'm working with a very small image. This is 72 pixels per inch image. So it's a pretty bad image to begin with. And you're not going to have perfect edges. You'd have a little less th of this. If I had carefully made my selection using the polygonal lasso tool, I'd have much sharper edges on this thing. Now there are some things you can try to do to make this better. One of those is to come over here and grab this tool here. Now this is 
the burn tool. You may be seeing the dodge tool up there in your tools. Come down to the options, click on burn tool, bring our exposure up to about 100%. Bring my size down. I'll use the left square bracket, bring the size down, pretty small. And I'm on the layer mask. Notice that light blue outline. If it's over here, double click on your layer mask. And I'm just going to paint right over that edge with this. And what that does is it increases the contrast of that black and white mask or edge. And that oftentimes will help to hide those little kind of jagged edges. This is a two-step process. I'll first come through here and do this to make the edge as hard as I can. Like that. And that helps a lot usually. And then switch over here to this side. Double click on the image side. Change to the blur tool over here. Again, make your brush real small like that. And then brush right over that on the image side. And I'm blurring that image side out. Now, sometimes that combination can help a lot. Sometimes it doesn't do a thing. It really depends. If it's really serious like this, then you come back in here with the black paint like I did down below here on the layer mask and just paint out that edge. Let's take a look at our hair though. Hold the space bar down. Here's looking nice. Now the edges are a bit pixelated again in here. We can try to fix that. We're still on the image side. Let's just try painting over this on the image side and see if that helps at all. Just try to blur it out a little bit. And sometimes this will help just to Soften the edges down and you get rid of some of that pixelization effect. And this is helping quite a bit, actually. Okay, so looking very good. And that's about what we can do here with this tool. I think this is a pretty good example of just about how far you can go with this. And you can go, as you can see, a long ways. And again, this is a fairly low resolution image. And if I zoom out a little bit on this, it looks really good once we get out to this size. I'll use the Control Zero to fit full screen. So the refinish can help you a lot on these kinds of areas in here. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this, if you want to get the working file over here, right hand side, this Photoshop Elements file, if you want to get the images that I used in this, and if you want to get my notes on how this project is done and my notes on the Refine Edge tool, you can get all of that inside my HTG Photo Coach program. It's a great program that helps you when you're working inside of Photoshop Elements. It's text-based with links, and you can go in there to ask all those questions, get all those little answers for things you think about as you're working on an image or problems you're having. That's the first place to go to check. It's kind of like a super help system that's interactive. It's a very, very useful tool, and you can take a look at that right down here. I'll put a link for that in the description. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and when you subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications when my new videos go up. I'm putting up new videos all the time, and so you don't miss any of those make sure you hit that bell icon. It's very important to subscribe because it's easy to lose channels if you watch a lot of things on YouTube. If you subscribe, you can always find my channel again. So very important to hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time.